So let's look at the following example in which we're going to calculate the change in entropy of the system as well as the surroundings. So a 5 kilogram piece of metal at 900 kelvins is placed into a large body of water at 300 kelvins. Assume that the specific heat of the metal is 500 joules per kilogram times kelvin and assume that the body of water is so large that when we place that metal into the water, the temperature does not actually change. So let's begin with part A in which we want to calculate the change in entropy of the system, our metal. Now in part B, we're going to calculate the change in entropy of the surroundings, so the change in entropy of the surrounding water. So let's begin with A. Now recall that the change in entropy of the metal is equal to the integral of the infinitely small change in our entropy from our initial state to our final state. Now because our temperature of the metal does not remain constant, that implies that the infinitely small change in entropy is equal to the ratio of the infinitely small change in Q divided by T. So our dQ is simply an infinitely small transfer of energy out of our metal, divided by the temperature given in Kelvin. Now, we're integrating from state 1 to state 2. Now, recall that Q is simply equal to this quantity, so we want to calculate how much energy is transferred out of our metal. So that means we use the following equation, which comes from the concept of calorimetry. So Q is equal to the product of mass times specific heat multiplied by change in T. So we essentially replace this Q with this entire equation. And now we integrate with respect to our temperature. So we integrate, we take the integral of the product M C D T divided by T from T1 to T2, where T1 is simply our initial temperature and T2 is simply our final temperature. So T1 is equal to 900 kelvins and T2 is equal to 300 kelvins. So notice the M and C are constants. So we can take those out of our integral and we get the following result. The product of the mass and the specific heat multiplied by the integral from T1 to T2 of dT divided by T. So now we actually evaluate our integral and we get the following formula. The mass times the specific heat of the metal multiplied by the natural log of T2 divided by T1 is our change in entropy of the metal. So let's actually calculate what this quantity is. Our mass is 5 kilograms. Our specific heat is given to be 500 joules per kilogram times Kelvin. And we multiply these two values by the natural log of 300 kelvins divided by 900 kelvins. Now these kelvins will cancel and the kilograms will also cancel. So the units of entropy are joules per kelvin. Now, Notice that natural log of a ratio that is smaller than 1 will give us a negative value. So that means the entropy will be negative. So the change in entropy of the metal our system is equal to negative 2747 joules per Kelvin. The negative sign simply implies that the entropy of our system, the entropy of the metal, decreases. Now we know by the second law of thermodynamics, the entropy of such a system plus the surroundings should increase. So that implies that the change in entropy of the water should be greater than this quantity. And let's see if that's actually true. So. We know, because we're assuming the body of water is very large, the change in temperature is zero when we place that metal inside the water. So because the change in T is zero, this must be an isothermal reversible process. So 
we know that the lake receives the energy that the metal loses. So how much energy does our lake receive? How much energy does our body of water receive? So the Q is equal to the mass of our metal multiplied by the specific heat of the metal multiplied by the change in temperature of our metal. So this will give us how much energy our uh, large body of water gains when that energy is lost by that metal. So 5 kilograms multiplied by 500 multiplied by 600 kelvins and we get 1000 500 kilojoules of energy is gained by the large body of water. Now recall, because our temperature is assumed to be constant, to calculate the change in entropy, we could simply use the following formula. The change in entropy of the water is equal to the change in energy divided by the temperature, assuming that temperature is constant. So 1,500 kilojoules divided by 300 kelvins gives us 5 kilojoules per kelvin, or equivalently, 5,000 joules per Kelvin. So notice the entropy of the surroundings of the water increases by this quantity. So if we take the sum of these two values, we get a positive value and that makes sense according to the second law of thermodynamics which states the total entropy of our system plus surroundings should always increase as it does in this example.